You may know that I'm a fan of the Benchmade Sock P as a defensive knife. This is a defensive dagger type knife that can be used either in a dagger type downward motion if you're in close quarters coming in towards your body or down into a threat that is right in front of you, or it can also be drawn in a more traditional kind of grip and used as a forward point coming up into a close quarters attack while in contact or driving out or even slashing and cutting. Well, this knife also makes a great backup or a complementary defensive tool to a firearm. And one of the nice things about it is that you can actually transition from the knife to the firearm when you have the opportunity without dropping the knife or needing to put it back into its sheath. Let's take a look at how that might work. I normally carry center line, so I've got a gun here inside the waistband, center line appendix carry. If someone were to come in and clinch me, grab me around the middle and keep me from being able to get to my center line carry defensive gun, what I might be able to do is come down, draw my sock P, and affect the bad guy from the outside. So if you picture someone here hugging me, hugging me around the waist, keeping me from getting to this firearm, and I were to be able to use this to affect them into the midsection, affect them up into their arm, maybe into the underarm area, and create some space, if they still presented a lethal threat at this point without having to get rid of the knife, I could transition to the firearm, either in a contact position or driving out into a shooting position if there was enough distance. Maybe there was a second threat. Maybe that threat then went to a knife, went to a gun. There was some other reason why I needed to escalate from the blade or from unarmed defense to the firearm. You can see that I can do that with the knife in my hand. Now, if you don't carry center line, you may find yourself in a situation where if we switch the training model of both the sock P and this training firearm that I have, if we have a traditional setup where you're carrying on your strong side, maybe on your hip, somewhere around a four o'clock or five o'clock, and you carry your defensive knife on the weak side, now you're in a situation where if this hand becomes encumbered, this hand is maybe holding off a knife attack or some other type of lethal attack, maybe controlling a gun, Maybe someone has reached around your waist and grabbed your gun and you're actually pinning your gun into your holster or wherever you're carrying it. At this point, while pinning that hand, if someone was trying to take this firearm from me, pinning the hand, pinning the gun down into my holster, use my weak hand to come down, use my defensive backup tool, in this case the sock P, to affect them either in downward motion, if I had drawn this way in an upward motion, create enough distance and space, get them off of my defensive firearm and then transition to the firearm. Obviously at this point, this knife could be discarded or I could go to a two-handed shooting position if I had created enough space to go to extension and not have to get rid of the defensive knife that I've drawn. That's one of the advantages of the way the sock P dagger works with the ring that allows you to hook either your pinky finger or your index finger, depending on how you drew it, where you grabbed it. Now carrying the sock P center line also is a great idea. Of course, it's just going to, at that point, be redundant if you're also carrying your firearm center line. So what you want to do is separate the sock P and the firearm if you're thinking about using it as a backup tool that you could then transition with to the firearm if the situation dictated.